Hi there and welcome back. In this video I'm going to walk you through the process of spherical projecting a 360 HDRI into a set for better integration of your CG elements. This will be a follow-up from my last video where we projected from the shot camera. Here in FSpy I'm just showing you the camera alignments. We have done this before, just align the vanishing points to the image. This time I am using a third vanishing point and since I, I, and since I don't really know the height of the wall I estimated it to be 4.5 meters. After importing the FSpy JSON file you should have your camera aligned and it will be pretty easy to create this basic geometry. In this case it's not a perfect match because I had to move a few objects for the spherical projections. So if I assign this simple surface shader to the geo you can see what spherical projection is just projecting the 360 image to the set and it's almost a perfect match. Let's go through the process, create a file as projection and import the 360 image. It can be a JPEG at this point. You can now grab your 3D placement node, scale it for better visibility and start to move it around. One thing will happen is that your image will be flipped. So in the place to denote just set the repeat U to minus 1. Then just keep moving the projection till you have a good match. As you can see we were pretty close to the original projection. I am just using an AI utility shader set to flat and the same settings for the placement nodes. If I enable the primary visibility of the set GU and do a render, you can see that we have the correct, the correct alignment. I am just using a different file with no light sources that we will cover next. So let's load the original HDRI so we can start from the same page. I'm going to show the truck so we can do a render to start with. Doing a render you can clearly see the result of the original HDRI, a very noisy result, because Arnold can't really resolve well those bright spots in the original image. In Nuke you can see the original HDRI and the final result where, where I painted the light sources. So we use a spherical transform to turn the image into a cube map, this way we can easily paint out the HDRI. Let's go through the process creating a spherical transform nodes and setting the output to a cube map. We also want to rotate the output so it's somehow aligned, this way will be more simple to paint the light sources. Now you want to use a roto paint node and clone stamp the image so it covers the windows. Finally, we can transform again the output to a let long, give it, giving it the same rotation but this time negative. Once you're done with your painting job, just write the new file into a NeXR. The next step is extracting the light sources from the HDRI. Ideally, you would have taken individual HDRIs from the light sources. In this case, I am using a higher resolution image, 8K, to extract from. Again, using the spherical transform node, we can set the output to a cube map, but this time set the format to views and rotate the image to have the best alignment to extract from. From there, use a simple crop nodes to extract the source. Finally, write out the extracted images EXRs, naming them accordingly. Repeat the process for the other side of the light long. This time I only extracted two, 
since they won't be much visible in the final shot so we can repeat a few. Back to Maya you want to create area lights in the original spots of the windows and attach the respective HDR image. Don't forget to load the painted version of the HDRI to the set projection. As covered in the last video, I have a shadow catcher plane with a shadow matte shader and also using an ambient occlusion node to add some contact shadows, refer to the last video where I explained this process. Here I'm just showing you the settings for the area lights with the images loaded, setting an estimated intensity and exposure. Ideally you would have a color reference like a grey ball to calibrate the color and intensity of the lights. Let's do a render of the current setup. As you can see by the render we have much less noise because Arnold can do a better job sampling the textured area lights. And we don't have any denoiser enabled for now. Let me just show you the render settings. The most important part is to have some extra bounces for the diffuse and specular. Disabling all the projection setup and lights. I am going to show you a sky dome light I have in the scene, which was also rotated to match the plate. Just before render let me enable the denoiser and lens effects that will just add some bloom to the emission shaders. As you can see by the render time it was much faster but the result is quite different. As you will see at the end there are ser several advantages of using a projected environment map. Let's do again a render with the environment projection setup. And although render times are bigger, we do get a better result overall. If you compare for example the shadows, the sky dome is not respecting the position of the light sources and is creating straight shadows in the render. I just did a batch render to show you the difference from the environment projection versus the sky dome light result. As you can see, the projected environment with area lights is creating much more detail and creating the correct reflections. In the other hand, the simple sky dome light is always reflecting almost the same as the truck moves through the scene. As we talked before, the shadows will also be way more correct since they are dynamic and not in a fixed infinite position with the sky dome. Hopefully you can see the difference and advantages of this workflow. The only downside is the render time, but having a moving object through the scene, you have no other option but to render with a projected environment. Either that or a real set scan. So that's it, let me know if you enjoyed this video and leave a comment with your suggestions or questions. Thank you for watching and have a good day. See you next time, bye bye.